Hey everybody, it's Nate and Steph from Explorers.life. We teach people how to build DIY campers. Welcome back to episode number 23 in our Ford Transit DIY camper van build series. In our last episode, we installed a Max Air fan on top of the van, and in this episode, we're installing our roof rack. So let's get started. Four months ago, we released a video introducing our new transit project, and we asked all of you what projects you wanted to see us tackle during this build. One of our viewers, Chase, emailed me and told me that Unaka Gearco made his roof rack and that he was super happy with it and recommended that I check him out to consider it for our build. So I checked out their website and it appeared that they really didn't have that much in terms of Ford Transit roof racks. But a few hours later, I got a call from Dan, one of the co-owners of Unaka, asking how they could help. I told them about the idea that I had about a custom roof rack that would hold a Max Air fan, a Nomadic air conditioner, with every single remaining square foot covered with solar panels. They loved the idea of helping us bring our ideas to life and also make it available to anybody else wanting the same roof rack for their own build, so we decided to partner up for this project. Eric, Unaka's other co-owner, took my idea and ran with it. He took my rough SketchUp design and put it into a much more accurate format and then set up a time to come out to our shop here in Steamboat Springs to hash out the details. We spent a late night working through his questions and a few follow-up Zoom calls later, and a few months later, we received three boxes via UPS Ground to make this vision become a reality. Here's how the project ended up, but let's take a step back and show you how we made it. And we actually have Eric from Unaka here for this install, which I'm pretty excited about. The cool thing about this is, is this is Mark one, you know, prototype of this roof rack. It's a prototype fit. And some things can change when it goes from, you know, being modeled up on a computer to actually being installed on top of the transit. And that's what Eric is here for. So Steph and I are pretty much going to be doing the install and Eric's gonna be here kind of in the background, checking test fits on stuff like that and seeing if there's any adjustments that need to be made for whenever this roof rack is actually available for sale to the general public. So, welcome. Let's get started. This roof rack comes broken down in quite a few parts. This lets Unaka ship it via UPS ground in just a few boxes as opposed to freight shipping to keep costs and logistical issues lower for all of us. We laid out all of the parts on the floor, taking special care to keep all of the hardware nice and organized. The hardware baggies are labeled according to what function they serve in the build, so we kept all of the hardware in their individual baggies to make our lives easier. So on these side rails, it's pretty important to notice that uh, the lengths of the 8020 and the side rails are not the exact same in terms of where they're split down the middle. The front piece of 8020 is longer than the back piece of 8020, and then this is offset on the side plates so that it makes a stronger joint. So it's important to know that the longer piece of 8020 is the front piece. And for the side rail, the side rail that kind of curves down is the front piece on the side rail so that it fits the contour of the van. Just makes it a little bit stronger uh, once we actually get it installed. We're gonna kick off the assembly process here by bolting the side rails together using these splice plates and the splice plate hardware kit. All the bolts that are being connected to nylock nuts get anti-seize on them to prevent the hardware from getting stuck. The bolts get torqued down to an appropriate torque. The side plate is fully assembled now with the splice plates and the fairing cap up front. And now we need to attach all of this to the actual 8020. Now, if you've never really dealt with 8020, the way we're going to do that is taking these T-nuts here and they simply slide into the top part of the 8020. Then you can move them around with, uh, with just a tool. And it's also important to know that it is directional and so the kind of protrusion of the bottom of the T-nut needs to go down. We're gonna put these fasteners, one at the front of this plate, 
one at the back of this plate, one at the front of this plate, and one at the back of that plate. And then the remaining ones, they simply go in the same spots as shown in the instructions here. The side rails get bolted down to the 8020 with T-nuts. These T-nuts aren't nylock nuts, so they get a drop of blue Loctite to keep the screws from backing out due to vibrations of driving down the road. The instructions for the rack show where approximately the roof mounting feet need to be positioned, so we measured out where those will go and marked them with some painter's tape. These can be adjusted as needed later, so we're just going for pretty close at this point. The next thing we want to do is attach the mounting feet to the 8020. And so the mounting feet just mount to the 8020 much in the same way that the side plate mounts on the other side. So we're gonna slide all of our T-nuts into place all the way down and then bolt them down. Now these mounting feet, they have rubber on the bottoms of them already. And so it makes it pretty waterproof, although we will still use sealant over the top. We slid the T-nuts in place to our pre-marked positions, put Loctite on the bolts, and bolted the mounting feet to the inside of the 8020 and tighten them to just past hand tight so we could adjust them further on the roof if needed. So this side rail is uh, completely done. Side, side plate is mounted to the 8020 and then the mounting feet are on there as well. Now it's pretty sturdy whenever it's up like this and will be really sturdy once it's mounted to the actual van. But it's important to note that right here is definitely the weakest part of this whole assembly because it is in two pieces. And it's not weak, it's just the weakest part of the assembly. So when you're handling it, you know, kind of use two people and pick it up from either side. That way it doesn't put a whole lot of stress on this joint. Same thing can be said for the side plates whenever they are not installed to the 8020. So just try not to stress out this area uh, too much while you're actually installing the thing. So I think that's all for this side. We are going to move over to the other side rail right there and get it bolted together in the exact same way that we just did this one, just opposite. We just wrapped up finishing this side of this side rail here and we found something that we uh, made it a little bit easier than the first go round. The fairing cap that goes on the very front, uh, it was easier to leave it off until this is already assembled. Uh, because when you have this flipped over, this point kind of gets in the way and kind of makes it all wobbly and stuff like that. So one of the fun things about kind of doing this very first one is we're able to find some stuff that we'll be able to add to the instructions to actually make this process easier. So just fun little side note. So the next thing we need to do is we need to pop the caps off of the top of the transit so that it'll expose the threaded inserts so that we can actually uh, fix the rack to the roof. So me and Eric we climbed up on top of the roof because we're going to start uncovering some of these caps and there's eight of them, so it's kind of a tedious process. We need to take these caps off, which are in the center of these punch outs, and there's eight of them up here, four per side. There's one, two, three, and then four right back there that they, mount, they match the mounting feet on the roof rack. And to take these off, put a little bit of heat on those caps and then take a plastic pry tool and then work our way underneath them and then the cap will pop off. And then we just need to scrape away some of the adhesive goop that's underneath there and then clean it up with some alcohol. So this hole, this mounting spot right here is not aligned with the actual threads of the mount down below. And apparently this is a pretty common problem on these Ford Transits for whatever reason. Now, there's no good way to really make this hole better, but there is a way to make this hole bigger and it's with uh, surgical tin snips. Uh, so we're basically just gonna cut and notch out the uh, body panel right around the threaded inlet, just like probably a quarter of an inch, and then fold that back under the best we can, and then paint that for rust prevention. And that's what we're going to do. So day two of this project, yesterday we finished up the mounting holes up on top of the roof. And it took way longer than expected because literally half of them, so four of them were off-centered 
and we had to trim out and paint the holes so we could actually have access to the threaded inserts. One of them we even had to re-tap, so that turned into kind of a pain and it's kind of annoying, but we persevered and got through it. So now we are going to mount the actual side rails up to the top of the roof, so let's get started. We move the side rail assembly to the top of the van and loosely bolt it in in place. We loosely bolted it in place because we needed to set the width of the roof rack with the cross braces. Cool. So side rails are up, looking good, it's taking shape. A few tips here is to loosen these two bolts if you need to, uh, to slide the mounting feet forward to back uh, if it's not quite lining up with the hole for the front of the van. So remember we took uh, measurements earlier and taped off where the mounting feet should be. And that should get you pretty close, but if you need to fine tune those, just loosen these up, uh, move the mounting foot, and then tighten it back down. The other tip is going to be to make sure that the distance from the front of the roof rack to the front of this mounting plate is the same on the driver's side and the passenger side. So we set ours to 10 and 3 quarter from the front of this mounting plate to the front of the roof rack on both sides so that the rack is gonna be squared up with the van for the rest of the install. Let's talk about this wind fairing for the third time this video because we found a better way to do it. So we took these uh, side rail caps or the, uh, the fairing caps off the side rails um, because we found that it was easier to attach these to the actual wind fairing just on a tabletop because these require eight bolts to attach these side caps to the actual wind fairing and only two bolts to attach these to the side rails. So trying to spend less time on the ladder, just a little easier to build it on a tabletop as opposed to standing on the ladder. Uh, that's what we're doing this time around because we found it was actually the best way. Final answer. Let's bolt this together. Now we're gonna attach the fairing end caps to the fairing. Um, and now these brackets are slotted, so when you add them, when you put them on initially, don't tighten them down completely so that they can still move around a little bit so that we can have that adjustment. So we're gonna put that on and bolt it down. As we tighten this, end cap down, we want this the end cap to be sitting on top of the fairing and then the end cap to be just perfectly flush with the outside of that fairing. We have the fairing end caps installed on the fairing at this point and it looks pretty nice. So now that this part is assembled, we are going to take this up to the roof rack and mount these to the sides of the roof rails or the side rails for the third and should be the final time in this video. The fairing is now completely installed and I'm a huge fan of how just this, this looks with the angle, how it angles kind of in and down. It just looks really sleek and clean and I'm a big fan of that. But anyway, a few tips on the actual process here. Uh, first tip is going to be put a piece of cardboard right down here because you have a fair amount of adjustability on these two side bolts here where the fairing mounts to the side rails, which means that you can pitch this up or down a little bit forward or a little bit backward depending on uh, what you need in your own little uh, setup there. And that means that if you let this go all the way forward, it would actually sit on the paint. So just a little paint protection there. Hey, Future Nate here with a completed roof rack. So talking about adjustability of the fairing, we actually decided that it was best to adjust this fairing all the way down so that it actually sits on the roof of the van. And to do that, we wanted to protect the roof of the van. And so we added this gasket all along the front of the fairing. So it's a hard plastic gasket on the front and underneath is a round rubber gasket so that it doesn't scratch up the paint. 
We felt this better because it decreased a few vibrations as well as wind noise that was going on once we were driving this around from the wind getting up underneath the fairing and having turbulence back here in the panels. The other thing that we really liked about having the gasket and the fairing all the way down on the roof is it seems like just talking around the shop that it's probably going to keep wind from getting up underneath, which may decrease wind drag and may be a little bit better for just drivability and fuel economy. So that was a decision that we made. And so we dropped the fairing angle all the way down. And our next step is going to be to set the cross braces in between the side rails because that's actually what's going to set the width of the side rails. We installed these three cross braces into the roof rack and we're not really using the cross braces for anything right now. They'll hold the solar panels eventually, but their purpose right now is to set the width of the roof rack. We needed to have the distance from this side rail to the other side rail set for these cross braces, so why not just use the cross braces? So we put the T-nuts into the top of the 80-20 and then pushed the side rails to where it's touching on both sides of this cross brace and bolted those down. And now our side rails are set perfectly uh, all the way down. And now we can tighten up the mounting feet to the actual van and finally secure this thing to the van. Once the 8020 and the mounting feet are tightened to their final torque, we then cover them with Dicor lap sealant. A little piece of tube around the sealant nozzle was helpful for getting under the side rail here. Since we had the sealant out, now was also a good time to drill our hole for our solar wire. Paint the edges. Put in our grommet, put the tape on the bottom of the roof entry gland, press it into place, and cover it with sealant. Now that's actually pretty much all there is to mounting this roof rack, and we are incredibly happy to actually see it come to life. The cross rails are part of the roof rack, but those actually get mounted to the solar panels, and then that gets mounted to the roof rack, and we'll be covering all of that in next week's video. Special thanks to Unaki Gearco for coming aboard with this project and helping us bring our idea to life. If you want one of these roof racks, you're in luck. We don't show anything on this channel that you all also can't get. So I put links to this roof rack down in the video description and it would truly mean the world to us to see this design that we've made on your van roof. And that wraps up this video. If you're not sure how we got to this point, tap below to binge watch our transit build playlist. Now, if you are all caught up, be sure to tap here to watch the next video in our series where we will be installing solar panels onto this roof rack. See you in the next video. Yeah.